guys. Welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's been having a great day. So there doesn't seem to be any news to report. So let's just get right to the video then. Hello, Leslie. I have to tell you that I love your channel. I think I've nearly watched all of your videos now. So my story began when I was 16 in 1989. I was sent to live with my aunt and uncle and two cousins near Grand Cache, Alberta, from the city of Winnipeg. My mother was arrested and I had nowhere to go, so my aunt and uncle stepped up and took me in. We lived in the country in a very large home on about a hundred acres of gorgeous woodlands. My aunt was in a wheelchair as she had suffered a stroke. One of the reasons they bought the land was because of the many wheelchair paths that went throughout the woods. Some going into scenic ponds with ducks and geese and a marshy area as well. Also, the whole family was into winter sports and snowmobiling. So there were trails all through the woods as well. It was a dream come true for anyone. My Aunt Lisa was young at heart and her and I became best friends. There was also my Uncle Rob and my cousins Stephen and Robert who were 17 and 19 at the time. Lisa and Robert were very laid-back parents, and they gave all us kids a lot of wiggle room to grow. So the first spring I arrived, I was so shy and nervous. I had never been to this new house, and I hadn't seen them in years since I was little. So naturally, I was very nervous. When my aunt and uncle and I arrived back at the house from them picking me up at the airport, there was like 10 kids in the basement hanging out. Mostly guys, but there was a couple of girls who I eventually became friends with. Lisa and I started going for walks on the boardwalk to talk and catch up. I would push her in her wheelchair. One day that first week, as we started out to the dock, overlooking the woodlands as it was called, we were kind of in the center of the marshy area when I noticed to the left of us and a little behind that the cattails were moving as if something was moving through the muddy area. There were slight ripples in the water as well. Something was hiding in the cattails, I was sure. I wasn't too nervous at first, so I didn't say anything to Lisa just yet, but I had an odd feeling like something was there watching us. Finally, I started to push Lisa forward, and she laughed and said, Okay, I guess we're leaving, eh? I just gave a laugh with her. I looked over my shoulder and I saw a very tall, black-skinned man looking up at us from the middle of the cattails, which was the area that I was drawn to earlier. By this point, Lisa was chattering away, and I didn't want to interrupt her rudely. I was a very timid 16-year-old, and it took a lot to get a conversation out of me. I think a lot of my silence on the matter stemmed from my mother having a very overactive imagination and definitely being on the kooky side. So, when I felt like I was being watched from my bedroom window, I just convinced myself that it was one of my cousin's friends. As time went by, I started feeling more and more comfortable as a family member. And then eventually, I started feeling less and less shy around my cousin's friends. I began to feel as if I was part of the group. Then the winter arrived, and along with that, the trailers carrying snowmobiles. There was a spot off to the side where a few of the friends left their machines unless they were taking off to go someplace else to ride their sleds. I had been there a year now, and Christmas morning I had received a brand new Polaris Indy because I had developed a love affair of snowmobiling, or skidooing as we called it back in those days. One weekend, there was quite a few friends out to play in the snow, mainly on the snowmobiles, and some were tobogganing down a huge hill out the back as well. Lisa and Rob had made a huge pot of hot chocolate and hot cider and told everyone to come in and warm up about 10 o'clock. 
Then they went off to bed. Although a lot of us were young, we were technically adults. I was stupid and reckless. I had a crush on one of Stephen's friends, Bray, who was a daredevil on motocross, which is what they did in the spring and summer and sometimes fall, and, of course, skidooing in the winter. So I was doing everything I could to keep up with him. By this point, almost everyone was back at the house. They went inside to warm up. I had been right behind Bray the whole time, and I thought I was being quite impressive. So I decided to leave the trail and go through the woods to beat him back to the house. It was by far the most ridiculous idea because I ended up slamming into a tree and flew off my machine and lost consciousness. I came to for just a moment as I felt I was being lifted up. I came to again and looked up and saw the face of the man who had been watching Lisa and I in the woods that first week. He was cradling me like a baby, and he looked down and grunted when he saw me looking at him. I felt his whole body shift and step through the deep snow when I went out again. I'm not sure how often I was in and out of consciousness, but at one point I saw the lights of the house in the distance as we were still coming through the woods. Then we stood at the wood line for a few minutes as I watched him. Then I heard people at the house talking about me, and at that point we walked a few steps out of the woods, and he gently laid me on the hard-packed trail we used to get into the woods, and then I lost consciousness again. When I came to the next time I was in the back of an ambulance with Uncle Rob, I stayed in the hospital for three days, and when I got home, the questions all began. Why did I go off trail? And how did I get to the beginning of the trail where I was found, a mile away from my wrecked machine? I answered the first question shyly, just saying that I wanted to beat Bray. Then they asked the second question. I was very hesitant, and I asked why. Uncle Rob said, well, we know someone with very large footprints had walked over to me. They asked, did I recall anything, and I said yes. I said I felt my helmet being lifted off my head. I saw who was carrying me as well. And they asked who it was, and I said, I think it was a Bigfoot. They all looked at each other. Then, of course, they asked why I thought that. I said I thought that he had told me that. He told me another name, which I didn't recall at the moment. And then he said, your people call me Bigfoot. And he grunted, or maybe he laughed. I wasn't sure. My family and closer friends were all in awe because they had seen the footprints throughout the woods. They could tell that he had been watching us through the woods all night and even peeked in my room and in the laundry room as well. All the other bedrooms were upstairs, but my room was built after I moved in, so it was built on the ground floor. So none of us feared Bigfoot after that. We saw him every now and then, and even throughout the years. He definitely enjoyed watching us, and he definitely loved it when Lisa brought him treats from the grocery store, and we would leave it in a big plastic basket at the pond beside the trail. It was a way of thanking him for his kindness that night in helping me. Lisa and Rob are still there to this day. Lisa is mostly bedridden in a big rec room downstairs. She saw him about seven years ago peeking in the sliding glass door one night as she laid there in her hospital bed, reading. Rob was there too, but he was sleeping. My cousins and their families have all seen him from afar a few times. I, unfortunately, haven't as I don't get up there as much as I would like. So that's our Bigfoot experience. I hope you can use it. Thank you, Caitlin. That was an amazing story, and I appreciate you taking the time to send it in to us. I think that was a little on the short side, so I think I'm going to do a second one. Hello, I'm Lewis, born and raised in Austin, Texas. A long time ago when I was a kid in Austin, by 
Galendo Elementary off Lamar by the old Chuck E. Cheese. The apartments we lived in is now called the Bainbridge Apartments. We live directly next to the pool in the back of the railroad tracks. I was about six or seven years old, so about 1996 or 97. It was about 7 or 8 p.m. We were all about to go inside, all of us kids and some parents outside playing in the little field back there. People started looking up and pointing at the same time. I heard my mom yell, Oh my God! And then I looked at her. She pointed towards the sky. I looked up, and I have no clue how high, maybe two football fields high, there was a huge light orange UFO. It looked like the circle glass covers we have in our houses that cover our lights. No windows, no single flashing lights around it, like an oval on its side, like orange metallic looking material, if any of that makes sense. It was slowly, very slowly, going down at an angle. The whole neighborhood was outside at that point. People started to get in their cars and leave. I had never heard anything about it. I don't remember any of us kids talking about it or hearing my mom talk about it. I bring it up now and again, hoping that she will finally say somebody told her not to talk about it. Sometimes I bring it up in front of other people because I know she saw exactly what I saw and she clearly remembers. Her face shows that she's scared, but the only thing she says to me is that her and my sister saw a UFO. It was pretty amazing, and I was only a kid. It stuck with me my entire life. I've moved around the U.S., and I have always found myself looking up randomly. I have never seen anything else up there. It's a cool feeling when you do see something that not too many people have seen. They won't really believe you because they didn't see it with their own eyes. Or, religiously, aliens can't exist. Or just no imagination. I have no clue. But human to human, you can believe me or choose not to believe me. But I'm telling you, I saw a UFO. It was not a plane or a balloon nor a satellite. I've just told about everyone I know. What scares me is the day they come to say the real hello to us. And there's no signature. I can definitely relate to how this person feels. Not anything to do with UFOs and aliens. It was more paranormal. But I've had people that were right there and experienced exactly what I've experienced, but they have no memory. So I can totally relate to what this person is saying. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed these two stories, and I hope you have a great evening. And I hope you will hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications of when I'm uploading, and of course, subscribe. And in the meantime, you know I love ya, and we'll see you back here in a day or two. Bye for now.